Hello, so today's class is on data normalization. So following uh, <clears throat> like the steps outlined uh, in the previous lectures that we saw for transforming uh, ERs and enhanced ER diagrams into relations, basically results or typically results in well-structured relations. However, there is no guarantee that like the anomalies, like there are a number of anomalies in that data are removed by following those steps. So normalization is basically a formal process for deciding which attributes should be grouped together in a relation uh, so that those and all anomalies are removed. So in this uh, lecture, so this is our uh, goal, like we're gonna see a uh, number of anomalies and like the process of data normalization. So as the slide states, it's a normalization is basically a process, a tool that allows us to improve the design, uh, the logical design that is of the database so that we can uh, avoid those anomalies and end up with well-structured relations, anomalies such as unnecessary duplication of data and so on. So uh, well-structured data, like I said, uh, well-structured relation is uh, one that does not have data redundancy and allows user to insert, update, or delete uh, data items without causing any inconsistencies in the data. So there are basically three types of anomalies or three major anomalies uh, at the time of insertion at the time of deletion or if you try to change something in the database okay um, so for insertion anomalies like these are the type of anomalies in which when you insert a new record or a row of data uh, then that row is already existing like all the data in that row is already existing so um, like there's no point adding an, another row because if you remember by definition um, uh, no duplicates are allowed in a relational database deletion on the other hand like when you delete some record of data it may um, cause inconsistencies of the in the data for instance if you remember from the uh, previous lectures the example of weak entity types so if you remove the uh, the parent uh, the child records should all also be removed because those uh, like dangling records without any parent should not be present in the database and modification similarly like if uh, something changes uh, in one row uh, it should be copied across the database uh, if there are other rows related to that data and we will see like examples of these uh, so for instance um, so this is just like a simple relation uh, and if you look is this a relation yes it is because there is uh, no multi-valued attribute and every row is unique right looking at the primary key what's the primary key uh, it's a composite primary key of employee ID and the course title. And why is that? If you think about it, only employee ID cannot be a key. Why? Because it has repeating values, right? Okay, so a key, primary key especially cannot have repeating values. So this employee ID alone cannot be a key. Uh, can it with come with a name? No, because this is repeated as well. Similarly, department name, salaries are repeated with the same employee ID. Only the course titles are unique when combined with the employee ID. So that's why these are uh, part of the key. But I tell you this uh, relation is not well structured. Right, because there is some repetition right 
with the same employee ID, the same name, the same department number, same salary. So these things are, so multiple things are being repeated for the same individual, right? So these are the types of things that we want to avoid. So what are the anomalies because of that uh, repeating data? So insertion, we cannot enter a new employee without having the employee take a class, right? Or at least empty fields for the class information, right? So this course or class, you cannot have this thing here, like this type of record. Why? Because that is part of the primary key, right? So these this record, Lorenzo Davis Finance, this cannot be entered in the database. Okay, one. Second is the deletion one. Like if we uh, remove an employee, we may lose about uh, like information about the existence of a class, for instance. Uh, example is if you look at this 140. So let's say you delete this employee or delete this row. Tax accounting, is gone because nobody else took that class and what date was that course completed this information is gone so if somebody comes and says okay tell me all the course titles if this course is gone then there is no record that tax accounting is in fact being taught or was ever being taught here as well okay so that is a an example of a deletion anomaly then finally like uh, modification uh, anomalies so giving for instance uh, a salary increase to employee uh, 100 okay so salary let's say you increased it to 49,000 so what will you have to do so in all instances of this employee go through the database find every instance of this employee and update that record as well right so since the information is being repeated you have to go in multiple places and spots in the database and update that okay so these anomalies basically exist because uh, of two themes uh, or entity types in this one relation one is the employee like information about the employee and information about the courses. That's why this repetition has occurred. If we break this relation into two, then it may be better, right? So maybe you will. Uh, so there is an unnecessary dependency between these entities. Okay. So these are the things that we try to remove in the process of normalization. The steps. So normalization can be accomplished uh, and understood in stages, each of which corresponds to a, something called a normal form. If you see in this figure, so there are multiple forms. So you start with a table and then you have a first normal form, second, third. Then there is something called BCNF or boy scout normal form, then fourth normal form and finally fifth normal form. Okay. In this class for the... Uh, sake of understanding we stop at third normal form because that's generally considered uh, sufficient okay um, in pure database theory or database classes like uh, from a technical point of view we go all the way up till the fifth normal form so normal form is basically a state of a relation that requires that certain rules regarding the relationship between attributes are satisfied and these relationships between attributes is something called a dependency or a functional dependency. And we will see like the, the proper definition in the coming slide. So starting with the first normal form. So the first normal form states that any multi-valued attribute, okay, also what's called like a repeating group has been removed in the database. So there is a single value at the intersection of each row and column in the database. Okay. So any multi-valued attribute has been removed. 
So that's why if you remember when we design our ERs, when we take them to the relations, we take the multi-valued attributes and define them in uh, like individual attributes or columns in a database. Okay. Then second normal form states that any partial functional dependency has been removed. Okay. And we will see like uh, what these definitions essentially mean. Then in the third normal form, we remove transitive dependencies. Okay. And then fourth and fifth, uh, etc. Like we, that's not the focus in this class. So, so you can forget what a multi-value dependency is and so on. Uh, so it is important basically that a database reach third normal form. Like like I said, BCNF and fourth and fifth are of theor theoretical interest, but uh, what's vital is getting the database up to a third normal form. Okay, that's what we will do. So if you remember, so functional dependency. So up to the BCNF, like even after third NF, normalization is based on the analysis of this something called a functional dependency. So functional dependency is basically a constraint between two attributes or two sets of attributes. Okay. Uh, what functional dependency is that a value of one attribute determines the value of another attribute. Meaning that if you know the value of that attribute, you will know what the other column will hold in its uh, uh, in that row for instance so let's go back to this data so if we know the employee ID we will know the person's name okay so if you know if I tell you employee ID is 110 so it the person name is Chris Lucero let's say meaning name is dependent on employee ID or employee ID determines the name. Meaning if you know the employee ID, you will know the name. Similarly, employee ID determines department name. So if employee ID is 190, definitely the department name will be finance. Similarly, if the department uh, employee ID is 140, Department name has to be accounting. If the employee ID is 100, department name has to be marketing, right? In both instances. So employee ID determines name. Employee ID determines department name. Similarly, employee ID determines salary, okay? And there are other dependencies in this uh, data. So for any relation um, R, an attribute B is functionally dependent on another attribute, let's say A. If for every valid instance of A, the determining one, that value of A uniquely determines the value of B. Okay. Uh, so functional dependency is not a mathematical dependency. B cannot be computed from A. Rather, what we are saying is that if you know the value of A, there can be only one value of B. Okay. <clears throat> then keys, like the information of keys, come from this, uh, like functional dependencies as well. Anything that can functionally determine any other attribute in the database becomes the key okay or it's called a candidate key and then once you choose one of the candidate keys that becomes a primary key so candidate key is something where each non-key attribute or field or column is functionally dependent on every uh, candidate key attribute okay so we represent functional dependencies for a relation using the notation that's shown in this figure. So in the top part of the figure, the A 
shows the representation of employee one the type of data that we were seeing the employee id name department name and salary so the horizontal line in the figure shows those functional dependencies so vertical line drops from the determining key uh, sorry determining attribute and it connects with these vertical arrows that point to each of the non key attributes okay and that are functionally dependent on this key or the primary key okay similarly another table um, like the full table is shown here so now notice that unlike employee one the top one employee id does not uniquely identify the whole row in the relation okay so employee id only determines one two three attributes and then the fourth attribute is determined by the combination of these two okay so since one attribute is not determining all the other non key attributes this attribute alone cannot be the key this attribute course title alone cannot be the key because it only determines one attribute so to determine all the attributes you need both of these as together to form the uh, key okay So for the first normal form states that there should be no multi-valued attributes. Every attribute value is atomic. Okay. So this table is not a relation. Like if you remember the definition of relation. Why? Because order ID, like there are some items missing here, right? So we don't explicitly see the customer or order date for the second, third, and fifth rows, right? So you can imagine seeing something like this in a spreadsheet and inferring that the second, third, and uh, and third rows correspond to the same order, but this is not sufficient for a database. A database needs to have a value in um, all the attributes or all the columns where it's needed in some cases nulls or empty things are allowed but by definition here we are violating the principle of no multi-valued attributes okay so it's as if like order 1006 has product id that's equaling to seven five and four like these so you can't have that in a true relation okay so what needs to be done is that you need to have this missing information for all these records to so compare this slide with the last one you had missing information in these columns all you did was fill those up now we have a relation it is in first normal form because uh, uh, like there are no multi-value attributes and you have unique rows so that is the definition of first normal form okay that ha have no multi-value attributes and have unique rows okay well and good however uh, this is not a well structured uh, database why because now we have anomalies because of data duplication okay remember the anomalies that we saw earlier so now we have those so anomalies in this table is the same like insertion deletion update you can read this so uh, why do we have this like i said earlier because we have multiple themes or multiple entity types in one relation that are determining multiple things so this results in duplication and unnecessary dependence between those entities so what do we do so we are sitting at first normal form we take it to second normal form how so the definition of second normal form is that a table should be in one nf and then in addition to that every non-key attribute 
is fully functionally dependent on the entire primary key. Okay, so every non key attribute must be determined by the entire key, not by only part of the key. Okay, meaning that there should be no partial functional dependencies. Example. So in this one relation, there are like partial dependencies and there are some transitive dependencies as well. So transitive is when one, so let's look at this. So order ID is determining customer ID, for instance, right? Because of these arrows. So order ID determines the customer ID. Customer ID itself is determining two other attributes. So this is a transitive dependency, okay? So in this relation, we have partial dependencies and transitive ones. So transitive, we just saw partial is that part of the keys or some attributes determine other attributes, okay? Apart from uh, the key itself. So here we have order ID determining this part of the relation, product ID determines this part of the relation, and then these both together determines the ordered quantity. So there is no one single attribute that determines every other attribute in the table, right? And second time rule forms definition states that every non-key attribute must be defined by the entire key, not by only part of the key, okay? So in this table, if our key is the, these two underlined ones, so is everything being determined by the entire key? No, these first four attributes are determined by only part of the key, which is order ID. These three attributes are determined by the product ID, which is again only part of the key. Only one attribute, which is ordered quantity, is being determined by all the key, which by definition violates second normal form. Okay, and this is another way to write those functional dependencies. So, what we are saying here is that order ID determines order date, customer ID, customer num name customer address, so we have written this thing as this, right? Customer ID determines what? Customer name, customer address. So it's these two arrows, which is this thing. And similarly for product ID and so on, okay? So how do we take a relation into uh, second normal form is to remove these partial dependencies. How? So we split the table uh, into three, one for orders, one for products, and one for order line, okay? Something like this. So order ID, product ID determines ordered quantity. So this and this determines this. And then product ID determines the things about product. Okay, product ID determines these three. So you're essentially taking a dependency and making that one relation. So this is one relation. If you take product ID, this becomes another relation. And for order ID will become another relation. Okay, for order ID, it becomes this relation. Okay, so that is everything is in 2NF. Okay, so removal of partial dependencies results in the formation of these two new relations called the product and customer order. Okay, So now we have like these three separate relations. There is no partial dependency, but we still have a transitive dependency, right? So order determines these and customer ID determines the name and the customer address. 
Okay. So then we split this relation as well. Because second NF or two NF's goal is to remove only partial dependencies. And then third NF or three NF's role is to remove transitive dependencies. So you have a relation up till two NF, then remove transitive dependencies. Okay. So how do you do that? So non-key determinant with transitive dependencies go into a new table and that non-key determinant becomes the primary key in the new table and then stays as the foreign key in the old table. So what did we have? Customer ID determines these three. So we break it. Customer ID becomes the primary of the new relation and it stays in the old relation meaning now in the old relation you'll have one two three attributes and the newer one you'll have these three attributes okay how uh, something like this so that one relation got bro gets broken down into these two relations so order id order date and customer id so now this becomes foreign to this table where it's primary and it has these two attributes okay so up till 3NF, now we are we have these four relations. Two we just created, right? This one and this one. So these two and these two are the existing ones from here. So they were already in 3NF because there is no transitive dependency. And now these two new relations are in 3NF as well. So our whole database comes to 3NF. Okay. So now note that if we had started with a like a, a thorough ER model, we would not have wound up with one big table containing multiple themes. So the original table basically had three separate entities that were all wrapped into a single relation, which were the customer product and order. Now furthermore, it hit the fact that many-to-many uh, -many relationship between orders and products. So this example basically illustrates the danger of going straight to the logical database design without first performing the conceptual model analysis. Okay, uh, but this sort of thing happens all often so we do this normalization. Okay, so that is basically the end of the uh, lecture on normalization.